This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and what in the name of goodness is all this stuff on the desk? Well, it's all for this review of the Other World Computing USB-C dock, otherwise known as OWC, stands for Other World Computing. They've been making Mac peripherals for some time, and they've made a USB-C dock for the 12-inch MacBook that we have here, wearing a cool carbon fiber skin. There is a 12-inch MacBook under that skin. So this dock adds quite a variety of ports. You have HDMI, you have USB ports, you have Ethernet and audio out. Pretty handy. And it handles charging as well because it comes with ta -da, this charger here. 80 watts of charging because USB-C supports charging in. Now this gets a little bit interesting and complicated because the next thing you folks are going to want to know, will this work with the Dell XPS 13 and 15 with USB-C? How about the Lenovo Yoga 900? How about phones? Oh my god, phones with USB-C ports like the ones that we have right here. Well, We'll talk about all that, and we'll talk about some alternatives for those of you who are not in MacBook land, which could be a lot of you. All these sorts of little adapters here, we're going to talk about the difference between USB-C, Gen 1, and Gen 2, 3.1, Gen 1, Gen 2, and Thunderbolt 3, because those are all different things. We're going to look at it now. So Otherworld Computing's USB-C dock is available in three different colors to match the three different colors that the MacBook is available in. You have your gold, your space gray, and your silver. Like you saw, it comes with a power adapter so it can charge your Mac and keep this device charged as well. This is a USB 3.1 Gen 1 product. This is not a, labeled as a Thunderbolt 3 product. This does not claim to be Gen 2. We'll talk a little bit more about what that means later. Anyway, it's $159. It's going to be available in March of 2016. And uh, the interesting thing about this product is I think for a lot of people, the 12 inch MacBook is a second highly portable laptop and not something you're trying to turn into a desktop given the fact that it's not the sharpest knife in Apple's drawer. It runs on a Core M CPU. It's, it's decent, but you know, a lot of you have more powerful machines as your main machine. So do you need a desktop dock? You know that better than I do. But more interestingly, we're all expecting to see USB-C and probably Thunderbolt 3 on the MacBook Pro refresh. So this, this could perhaps have new life and it may even be that there's Thunderbolt 3 support in this and they're just not saying it yet because there's nothing in the world of Apple that can take advantage of it. So it's a good looking dock. It's uh, $159, like I said, which is certainly not unreasonable. That's around what docks go for, if not more. For example, Microsoft's Surface dock costs $199. We'll talk a little bit more about those kind of docks later and why USB-C could be exciting or USB 3.1 and Thunderbolt 3. Anyway, on the front here, we have SD card slot compatible with UHS Type 1 cards, high capacity SD cards. We have a combo audio jack. We have this USB port that's plugged into a keyboard right now. On the back, we have Lots of cables attached. This is a cable land fun right here. Three more USB ports. Now these are USB 3.1 Gen 1. They look just like USB ports that you're used to, USB 3.0. Why is that? USB 3.1, a lot of people think that means USB-C connector. USB-C is a connector type only. It doesn't speak for what kind of interface is behind it. So for example, the MSI GT72 Dominator Pro that we reviewed had USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports on it. They just were typical USB-A ports like these. So USB-C right over here in case you want to connect another USB-C peripheral. Not that there's a whole lot of them out there right now. There's some flash drives and hard drives just starting to come out. This other USB-C port is the one that's marked with a little computer icon because it's the one that connects to your Mac. We've got gigabit Ethernet here. We have the HDMI port that's connected to our ASUS IPS full HD monitor. Now that port can do 4K up to 30 hertz. That's the limitation of the Mac anyway, but this is HDMI 1.4 here. You need HDMI 2.0 if you want to go to 60 hertz on your 4K. But anyway, the, this Mac can't drive 60 hertz 4K. And that's where the power plug plugs in. It's a nice shiny pretty top, nice pretty shiny bottom. Nicely enough weighted that it'll stay on your desk, especially when you start tugging on all the cords. Everything worked. We tested out every port and a variety of peripherals with this, and it worked. It works with the monitor just fine, Ethernet, the whole thing. They do have their own Ethernet driver because they say that Apple's default driver may drop the connection every so often. So if you buy this dock for your 12-inch MacBook, make sure to download their Ethernet driver. Uh, for, if you're running Windows in Boot Camp, you don't need it. It's just for Mac OS X. 
Now, clever and inquiring minds would say, hey, can I buy this dock and use it with my Windows 10 laptop that has a USB-C port with 3.1 Gen 1, perhaps Thunderbolt 3, also Intel. For example, this XPS 13 Infinity Edition, the latest model, has a USB-C port that does both USB 3.1 and Thunderbolt 3. Uh-huh. And then there's the Lenovo Yoga 900, also has a USB-C port, does USB 3.1 and as well. Oh my goodness. And then there's phones, right? Because phones have USB connectors sometimes of the USB-C variety. This is the Nexus 6P. This has a USB-C port, yes, but guess what? Behind it is USB 2.0 as a standard. So it doesn't do any of this fancy stuff. You plug in the dock, it doesn't even notice. It just totally ignores it completely. Then you have certain Windows phones with continu continuum, like this Nokia Lumia 950. This has a USB-C port and it does do stuff. For example, Microsoft has their own display dock. It, when we plugged it into the dock, it, it noticed it, it made the little Windows bing bong sounds and then it rebooted itself. Rinse and repeat and that's all it did. So uh, this is where the complexities of something that should be a universal standard like USB 3.1 Gen 1 and Gen 2 aren't always so universal and then you throw in Thunderbolt 3 and it all gets confusing. So this dock we tested it with the Dell and it actually charged the Dell though with the XPS 15. The XPS 15 said hey wait a minute you're not giving me enough power I might drain my battery. Uh, the XPS 13 didn't say that. That's because the XPS 15 wants 120 watts. Again this guy has an 80 watt charger and the maximum allowed is 100 watts over USB-C, whether it's Thunderbolt 3 or whether it's USB 3.1. So you can charge most Ultrabooks for certainly convertibles, tablets, that sort of thing, but big old quad-core machines like that, they're going to require more power than USB-C can deliver anyway because the spec tops out at 100 watts. We tried it with the Lenovo Yoga and it, it didn't do anything at all. Interesting, right? So don't buy this if you want to use it with Windows machines right now. There's the moral of the story. So What's going on with all of that? Now, there's probably custom firmware in this that, that's meant to work better with the Mac than with anything else, which is an interesting idea because here we have a variety of adapters that you can buy and use with both the Mac and with any of these USB-C Windows 10 machines. This one is a Lumsing HDMI adapter. So you can go from USB-C to HDMI. Here we have a mono price USB-C to DisplayPort adapter. Also works fine, goes all the way up to 4K at 60 Hertz refresh rate assuming your computer can do that, which pretty much every computer shipping with USB-C can. And then we have the uh, built-in cable approach, USB-C. Again, this is a display port at the end. That also works. All of these work with the 12-inch MacBook, and they work with all of these PCs as well. So bingo, good times there. This Dell uh, verbosely named product here, this is their USB-C thingy. They call it the USB-C to VGA, HDMI, Ethernet, and USB 3.0 adapter. Okay, this is about $75 to $79. Clever little hidden USB-C connector right there. So it does all these things. It works with all of these machines and it works with the 12-inch MacBook as well. Now, if you remember, I told you the, the Nexus, unfortunately, it does USB 2.0 over that USB-C port while the Lumia that supports Continuum, which is Microsoft's lingo for running a desktop-like experience on a monitor with a keyboard and other stuff like that, does support USB 3.1. So here we have the phone plugged in using that Lumsing little HDMI adapter, and we have the desktop going over here, and this turns into a virtual touchpad. So bingo. If you have a Windows phone, all, <laughs> what, 7% of you in the world, that happens to be running Windows 10 for phones, well, you've got this working right here too. And in the future, we'll probably see more phones that have more capabilities out. So let's talk a little bit about standards. I know some of you are going to argue about this and you just go check out USB.org and you can find out for yourself. USB 3.1 Gen 1 is pretty much everything 
that USB 3.0 is and not really much more. It does the same five gigabit per second data transfer speeds and it USB 3.1 was meant to be the culmination of the finished standard and everything that USB 3 could do by the end of USB 3's existence. USB Gen 2, which we're not really seeing much of, USB 3.1 Gen 2, that one doubles it to 10 gigabits per second. So it gets a bit fancier and a bit faster. Now, just like with USB 3.0, you actually could connect displays via USB I know some of you have been doing that, and other kinds of peripherals, obviously audio peripherals and stuff like that. So that's not new for USB. Of course, when you start to hub them all together into a little device, it's great. Then there's Thunderbolt 3, which Dell is into in a big way, and I'm sure Apple is going to have that in the MacBook Pro. And that lets you daisy chain up to six devices, 40 gigabit per second transfer speeds. Now, Intel, they developed the Thunderbolt standard, and they thought part of the reason it wasn't adopted so widely is because of yet another obscure kind of cable and they were more expensive. So you can use a standard USB-C cable meant for USB 3.1 with it. You'll only get 20 gigabit per second though. So you'll still need an active cable, which is more expensive to get full Thunderbolt 3. Thunderbolt 3 allows for things like external graphics amplifiers, which we're all looking forward to seeing in the Razer Stealth 1 with its core appliance accessory, for example. So all of these do pretty much the same thing as the Lenovo One Link docks, the Microsoft Surface, stock, all that sort of thing. The appeal here is if we have a unified standard, which eventually, hopefully we will, and some clear language about whether something is USB 3.1 Gen 1 or Gen 2 or Thunderbolt 3 and all that sort of stuff. And everybody gets their firmware all straightened out. So you don't have to buy a Lenovo dock and then you switch to Dell brand PC and you have to chuck that dock. It's no good to you anymore. And the same thing with the Surface dock. I mean, all of them did the same thing, display, Ethernet, audio, more USB ports coming at you but they're proprietary to that brand of device. So the appeal here is in theory that you eventually will have one thing that will work with several computers. So here we are at the beginning of a brave new world, right? But it's a complicated one that's taking baby steps. Now you can understand why. I know some of you say in the comments sections you won't buy a laptop unless it has a USB-C port. Now you just have to remember USB is simply a connector type. A reversible teeny connector that's in itself is a very nice thing. It doesn't mean that you're going to get Thunderbolt 3, for example. It doesn't mean there's a lot of peripherals out there to take advantage of it. We haven't actually seen a Thunderbolt 3 graphics amplifier on the market yet. Someday we'll see razors. It can be awfully confusing to find out where your device supports. There are even some Windows tablets out there that have USB-C ports, and you would think that they're going to do all the neat stuff, and they're really doing USB 2.0 or 3.0 behind the scenes, so you're not going to always have everything available. But it's promising. We're getting there. It's still a confusing kind of mess. Now you see some cables and adapters that will work with pretty much everything. For example, the display adapters... Display port, HDMI that work even with this Windows phone right here. Dell's little adapter. I mean, this thing so far has worked with everything. Best 75 to 79 bucks I could have ever spent, honestly, for using this with a whole bunch of these devices. And, you know, it is amazing how complicated it still is. I thought this was going to be a quick and easy video to put together. And it ended up taking a day and a half to test all the different permutations and standards and to see what worked and what didn't work and to update every Thunderbolt firmware that was available on every machine and so on. So it's challenging, but we're getting there. But for those of you who have the 12-inch MacBook, life is very simple. If you need a dock, this guy is going to work. Everything on it works just fine. 159 bucks is not a bad price to spend. And it's from Other World Computing. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and that's the state of USB-C and Thunderbolt 3.